Okay, you guys, project time. Luke is at camp, so I'm gonna try to knock this out while he is there. I will show you some of it as I go, but I'm literally making this up in my head as I go. So I've seen a ton of inspo pics on Instagram and on Pinterest, of course. So, working with what's in my house, let's see if I can make this happen um, with my limited carpentry skills. Let's see what we can knock out today. First thing I wanna share with you, this is probably not technically the way a carpenter would do it, but here's the deal. So I have baseboard all over my house. It's everywhere, it matches, it's nice, it's clean. I'm not changing it. So when I build this, I'm not gonna remove this piece. Also, if I decide to change my mind and I don't want, so I'm building like a shiplap kind of entry piece with hooks. If I decide I don't want that here and I remove this baseboard, it's gonna be a problem to try to repair it, especially because it's right at the front door. So instead, I'm gonna use this piece of trim. And I found a piece of trim that is I forget the name of this, you guys, forgive me. But it's thinner on the bottom, thicker on the top, and this is the thickness of the thickest piece that I'm gonna be attaching to the wall. So it's gonna have somewhere to sit. So I'm gonna attach this on top of my baseboard. So when it's attached, it's just gonna kinda of look like I extended my baseboard in this section. And then because it has this nice, um, it's got a five eighths inch lip on it, it's the same as the thickest piece of trim I'm gonna be adding to the wall. So it'll have somewhere to sit so it doesn't hang out over top of my existing baseboard because that would look funny if I was attaching stuff to the wall and it stuck out further than what's already here. So this is gonna give me the space I need so that I can create it, it'll sit on top, it'll look flush and clean. And then if I change my mind, cause gosh knows all of us home decor girls do, I can. So that's where I'm starting. Wish me luck you guys. This is probably gonna be my, a small. it's a small build, but it's probably gonna be one of my harder ones because it's a lot of different pieces that I'm trying to make fit together perfectly. So let's see how this goes. Okay, let's give you a little update on what is going on here. So I added my base piece. So just this little piece of trim that matches the thickness of the top of my existing base and then has a thicker top. So it's a 5 eighths, 5 eighths inch thick top. There we go. And so it perfectly matches this piece of um, fingerboard trim that I'm going to use. See on the side, so now when I caulk this and paint it, it's all going to look seamless and like it's one big piece that I installed on the wall. And then down the road, if shiplap's out of style, I can rip this off, fill a few holes, and not have to worry about ripping up my base trim. Um, and we just redid our floors, so I'm super leery to do anything to our new floors. So I'm leaving it, I'm working with what I've got, um, and I'm just gonna add on to it. So I've taped on this first piece of trim. So this build out is gonna have four pieces of trim going vertically, and then shiplap in between horizontally. So I'm using this first piece, I'm taping it without installing it as my guide. I want full pieces of shiplap all the way up. So I'm gonna see how far up I need to go to get the height I want to add then a shelf and my corbels. So I'm gonna use this first piece as my guide. I don't wanna nail it because I'm not exactly sure the length. Once I figure that out, then I will cut this, cut the rest to match, and then fill in my shiplap all the way up. And then I will cap it off with another piece of trim, corbels, and a shelf. So this is the plan. I measured um, the space for my shiplap. I drew lines where I anticipate my white boards are gonna go. And there you have it, you guys. Step one, get yourself set up, figure out your darn measurements, because that probably is the hardest part. It was like, okay, where am I gonna measure? And then also take into consideration if you have any other projects down the line. I ended up spacing this. Let me climb upstairs so you can see it. I spaced it a little bit closer to um, the garage door over here and left a little bit more room over here because the dining room has not been refinished yet. I have a feeling we'll end up doing some thick trim around and case this. So I wanted to make sure I left myself a good amount of space over here. So if we have any trim that wraps, that it won't interfere with this. So something to think about when you're building, um, always keep those future projects kind of in the back of your mind. So I am off to start cutting some shiplap to see how high I need to go. Okay, so I tried to use my time as wisely as I could so you can see where the sun is creeping up on where I use my saw. So I decided to cut all my shiplap first. So I cut a pile of 30 pieces, 15 inches each, which is what I'm gonna use for my measurement across the board. Um, I, my cutting has improved, you guys, after like after 20 projects. Um, so it's not perfectly stacked, but when it is perfectly stacked, I wanted to make sure that all the pieces are the same length and the same width, uh, because when I stack them in the build, if they're not the same, it's gonna be funny. So. You can see I went through kind of a pile of shiplap. I laid them all sideways to make sure that they were all the same thickness. So I wanted exactly six inches thick. Some of them were more, some of them were a little less. Um, that's kind of what happens when you go to a big box store and have them rip the wood. So you just have to be extra careful. 
So um, that was my one tip from this project. Make sure your shiplap is exactly the same before you install it or you are gonna have funky, crazy lines all over the place. So it is all cut and we're gonna start installing on the wall. And this is what I'm gonna use as my spacers. Um, I used to use popsicle sticks that are the same thickness, but I found these. These are actually court paint stirrers. They're thicker or they're longer, same thickness, and so much easier to work with than tiny popsicle sticks or nickels or people use all sorts of crazy things to space their shiplap. So we're gonna use jumbo popsicle sticks and start nailing this to the wall, you guys. Okay, so I'm gonna start installing the shiplap. My plan is to start with the first row. So the reason I have these taped, um, my side pieces taped instead of nailed to the wall is I don't know exactly how high my 10 pieces of shiplap that I think I'm gonna need will be. Because you have the quarter inch spacing and it's, it's super hard to perfectly measure shiplap and I don't want anything cut. So I'm gonna run full pieces of shiplap when I get to the height I want. I will stop and I can then cut my side pieces and the rest of the side pieces because I will know and then I can just build my shiplap all the way up inside of this piece. So that is my plan. Once I know the height, then I can make my cuts, secure these properly to the wall with tape, and fill in all the rest, you guys. Okay, I got the first section completed. So I ended up using 10 pieces of full shiplap, and then I went and marked my two um, sides of trim and then cut them to fit. And then I'm gonna run another piece of trim across the top. So I decided instead of just cutting all of the side pieces and laying the shiplap in between, I'm just gonna keep building like I am. I have two more sections to do. So I taped the next um, piece of trim on, leveled it, build my shiplap, cut it and then build my last one and then I'll run my board all the way across the top. I just want to make sure that I don't get too far ahead of myself. I know from experience in shiplapping my walls aren't straight, they're not level, sometimes they bow, sometimes they do funny things. This is right before a curved wall so I don't want to get too far ahead of myself and I'm going to go a step at a time and make sure it goes right versus trying to cut corners and go fast. So a little more shiplap to go but a little easier than I thought you guys. I thought this was going to be <laughs> way harder but so far so good and I'm loving it. So hooks, corbels, a shelf, shiplap, what's not to love you guys? Okay, so the shiplap is all installed. So there's three sections of shiplap in between four pieces of the trim. It's gonna get hooks, corbels, and a shelf. But first I'm gonna put one, um, the same trim that I have, this white um, prime fingerboard going across this way um, to cap it off on the top. Then corbel and shelf. Here we go. Okay, so the top piece is on. So this guy is good. It's ready for um, some caulking in the holes and paint. But before we do that, we have to put up the corbels and the shelf. So this is what I got from Home Depot. Um, everything, I usually always get my wood from Home Depot. So they are seven inch by five inch oak brackets. And we are gonna put them like so. And then the shelf is gonna go on top. So I'm gonna attach these here just for a little extra height and interest. What do you think? I'm liking it. So I'm gonna attach all these guys and then put my shelf on top and then it's really time for paint and hooks. Okay, hanging these is a little tricky. Um, the holes aren't super lined up. Um, they're kind of clunky and getting them to lay flat and flush where you want them is a little bit of a challenge. So here's a little trick. Um, I just used my nail gun and just put in one nail so that it's gonna hold it in place for me you won't see it when I paint it and it's gonna let me make sure that it's level and exactly where I want it versus trying to fumble and screw this thing in. So there's my trick for you. Give it one single shot with your nail gun. Um, do turn the pressure up because these are thicker, they're oak, it's a lot thicker than your shiplap and it'll hold it in place while you secure the rest. Okay, I have all the corbels up. So what I'm doing is using the nail gun, like I said, putting in two small nails just to hold it up. I tried with just using one on this one. It definitely needs two. Um, these are a little, they're not the best corbels, but they're going to work for our purpose here. So definitely want to make sure that you pre-drill your holes. So pre-drill every single one of those four, then go back and put your screws in. I'm not anchoring these in because they're going into wood. There's going to be two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, six, sixteen nails up here, you guys. So I'm not all that worried. And the shelf that's going up there is not overly heavy and I'm not putting anything heavy on it. So, um, that's what we're doing. That is our plan. 
So I'm gonna pre drill these holes, screw the corbel in. Okay, you guys, final step is the shelf. So you can do the shelf however you want. I ended up going with, um, it's about a seven and a half inch wide shelf. So it's wider than my corbels, obviously. You want a little bit of um, additional depth on your shelf. And I decided to do about an, a little more than an inch and a half hang on the sides, just to extend it a little bit because I am not gonna build up any higher. I'm gonna leave this as it is and put some artwork up there um, and not build to the ceiling. I think I'm really happy with how this is and I'm not gonna continue. So to attach this, I am just, I don't wanna, this is a really, um, it's not the best material. It's gonna paint great, but it's not a great piece of wood. So I don't wanna screw into it and splinter it. So I'm gonna use my nail gun. I'm gonna use two inch nails on the back side and then one inch shorties on the front and nail in from the top down and go into this corbel. So it'll just catch it enough um, and then everything's gonna be caulked to the wall and stuff. So not too worried about it moving, but there you go, you guys. Quickie little simple build. I'll put my shelf under here and with some hooks, it'll be a great spot in the entryway for people to come in and leave their stuff. Okay, there you go, guys. The build part is done. So now comes adding um, just the finishing touches. So I'm um, running some thin beads of caulking around to make this really look like it's built in and part of the wall. And I'm gonna leave the nail holes in my shiplap, I always do, um, but I may clean up, maybe I won't, let's see. I usually sometimes will fill these, but they're pretty close, so I may not. I think I might leave it, you guys. Um, but I am gonna just do a little bit of caulking and clean things up a little bit here and there. And then primer and paint, and that's a wrap. Single day took me like three hours or so. Um, I went shopping yesterday. I always, always try to pre-shop. I shop one day and then build the next day because it's too much to try to do both in the same day, especially with a little guy. So I shopped yesterday. Today we installed. Hey, okay, you guys, I'm finally back to this. So I'm working on some finishing touches before I start painting. So filling some of the nail holes. I'm only gonna fill in, the, in what is already white trim. Um, I leave my shiplap with the nail holes. I like the character and the detail that it adds. So I'm just filling the stuff in the white trim. I'm using a wood filler for this. It's kind of just what I had. Um, on the corbels, there are a ton of holes for screws. So I'm using the wood filler. It'll probably take me two passes because the holes are kind of deep to fill them in. I think it just looks a lot cleaner, not seeing them. Um, they came with like little caps you could put in, but it was just a little too bubbly for my taste. So I'm just gonna fill them in, sand it down, and keep it a little bit more sleek looking. I let the wood filler really dry on these holes where the screws were because they're super duper deep holes. So I'm gonna go back and clean them up, obviously, with a little sanding block and clean all of this gunk up. I may have to go over it again, um, but these were definitely bigger holes to cover. So take your time with it, use the putty knife, let it dry, do a second coat if you need to. That's what I'm gonna probably do right now, but first I'm gonna use the sanding block and clean it up and see what it looks like. Okay, you guys, I have two coats of the wood filler on the corbels, so they're pretty smooth now. I'm just gonna do one more light sand, and then I'm gonna take some white caulking and just caulk around the corbels, just to clean up a little bit. I'm gonna leave all of this kind of raw, leave, leave the lines unfinished. I like how that looks, um, but this part bothers me. I don't like that you can see how many different things are connected up here, so I'm gonna clean that up, and then it'll be time to paint this up. Okay, so finished caulking. So I basically ran it up each side of the piece on the wall and then I went around the corbels and then I did the space in between um, the shelf and this top piece of trim. The rest I'm leaving, it's kind of the fun, like you can kind of pick and choose what you want to fill, what you don't want to fill. Um, some of it I like and some of it I was like, Meh, I think it's too much. So that's what I decided to cover around the corbels and um, to kind of bridge the gap between the shelf and this trim because it was definitely a little bit of a rolled edge and a wider gap than I would have wanted. And that is it. So I'm going to let this dry a few minutes, do a really, really, really light sand over it to make sure it's smooth, and then it's time to prime and paint. And hopefully that doesn't take too long, you guys. I'm so ready to just put the hooks on, style this face back up. But I guess considering I shirked it yesterday, it's not so bad. It's gone pretty quick. So here we go. A few more minutes and then I can sand off um, any excess caulking and make sure it's nice and smooth, and then we will prime it up. Okay, finally getting a minute to paint up this little entryway piece I built the other day and I am priming it first. So I used, 
I always use that primer that I just showed before on the shiplap. It does really well. You can do one coat of it, and you can see the difference with just one coat of primer. It really absorbs. And then I do two coats of paint, and it gives a nice, clean, finished look. So I'm even priming over the white pieces that are technically the white pieces of trim that come pre-primed because I fill nail holes and all that stuff. I think it just helps the paint not flash better. So priming everything. Um, I do use a brush when I paint my shiplap because what I don't want, you can see like the little spot where the paint filled in here. With the brush, you're able to kind of go through and clean them out. And it saves you work less, <laughs> saves you um, some time later on where you can go back just as the paint's starting to dry and kind of get it out of these spots because I don't like how that looks. And when I can't get it out, I'll go back at the very end and scrape them out. But the paint gives me, the paintbrush gives me a little bit more flexibility to kind of clean that stuff out as I go. Clearly I hopped on this video too soon because I have a lot of cleanup to do, but I don't like paint chunks in between my shiplap. I like it to be nice and clean like that. So that is my tip. I always paint my shiplap literally square inch by square inch with a brush. I do have a roller here. I'm gonna roll the shelf, um, some of the trim where I can, just to avoid brush strokes. The shiplap is so, it has so much texture to it. You don't see the strokes, but on the flat pieces you kind of do. So where I can roller, I roller. Otherwise, I use my brush. So we are gonna prime this whole thing. And typically this stuff dries so fast, I can kind of, once I'm done going this way, I can come back almost immediately with paint and start painting across. So primer first, then paint you guys. Okay, everything is primed. Now I'm gonna go back over it and I'm gonna use the same white I use all over my house. Um, it is White Dove from Benjamin Moore. And typically I paint in flat paint, but I wanna paint this in a semi-gloss because I want it to look more like a piece of furniture, a little bit more like a built-in. And anything built-in we have in this house is done in a lacquer finish. Um, and I'm not gonna have this sprayed. I, I'm just gonna do it myself. So I'm gonna go for a semi-gloss and see how I like it. Typically all of my shiplap is flat paint, but it's also meant to be a big shiplap wall and not meant to look like, you know, I want this to look like an entryway piece that's a little fancier. So my plan is semi-gloss. Okay, you guys, I'm getting ready to style this space back up. I got the bench over here, but I wanted to give you a final view before I put hooks and style and do all that other fun stuff. So I did the semi-gloss on the whole piece. And just to kind of break it down for you, I did, I primed everything and then I did one coat of semi-gloss on anything that was white. So this trim, this bottom trim and the shelf, I did one coat and then the shiplap and the, the corbels I did two because they were oak um, and the plywood was obviously um, a wood color. So adding that second coat really just made the whole thing look clean and seamless. Now there's one thing I did because I like it, but you may not. So you can kind of tell there's like some texture and some waviness to this. I like seeing that. I like seeing the texture. I didn't fill my nail holes in. I didn't necessarily fill in the gaps next to my trim. I like seeing that. I want it to look old because I like it, but you may not. You may want a cleaner look, and if you do, maybe this way you can see a little better. So here you can see like the texture in the wood. I like to see that. I think it adds some depth, some character, but if you don't like that and you want a smoother finish, just take a light grit sandpaper before you prime and just sand down your shiplap to make it nice and smooth and then you shouldn't have that problem. Or, other idea is to do flat paint. If you do flat paint, it's not quite, you won't see that glimmer and all the texture. Let me show you over here. Another area where I did shiplap, this is the flat paint. So you really don't see the texture in the wood because the paint doesn't shine, there's no shimmer to it. So this is a little bit of a different look. But I wanted this to look really old, like some piece that I found that I painted a gazillion times, which is what that texture looks like to me. It looks like it's been painted so many times. And then I bolted it to the wall. So that is why I'm leaving it. Um, and I, I just love the way it looks. I'm gonna add some old funky character pieces on top, this farmhouse looking bench, and that's it. And some hooks so I can hang some cute stuff. So that is what I did. I did a semi-gloss paint. I will take a picture to show you. And it was really simple. So two coats on shiplap and anything wood colored, one coat on any white trim that you add. 
Okay, you guys, we are done. And it's all styled, so hopefully you've got a minute. If you didn't, pop over to my feed. Um, let me know what you think, leave me a comment. So one thing I do wanna point out, I put the hooks on. I put them on the first piece of shiplap. I hung them directly in the middle, so it's seven and a half inches because these were 15 inch boards. If you remember, I showed you a different hook. I ended up changing my mind. When I started to install them, it was just a single like down loop hook and I felt like it, this piece needed something to go in both directions and kind of um, draw your eye up and down. So I ended up swapping these out. These were from Hobby Lobby. I think they were on sale for like $2.49. So it was definitely sold on that. The mirror was a super old piece that I had in my last house. And it was one of those things I just, I loved it, didn't know where it was gonna go. And I was so excited to finally put it to use. So there you go, you guys, painted up, styled, some simple greens, some buffalo check. You know, I love that. And this little entryway hall tree is complete. So would love to know what you guys think. Shoot me a DM or pop over to my feed and leave a comment.